The Yellow Bus is a picture book about many things. On the surface, it's a simple story for young children, but it's also a book about the passage of time and finding purpose in our lives, even as our circumstances change. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book, and I'll talk with the author about the inspiration behind it. Lauren Long is the author and illustrator of the New York Times bestselling Otis Picture Book series, which is now an animated series on Apple TV+. Among his other credits, he's illustrated the number one New York Times bestseller of The I Sing by Barack Obama. He joins us to talk about his new picture book, The Yellow Bus. Lauren, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Well, let's talk about the inspiration for this book, because at the back of the book, you share that inspiration. So tell us about how the yellow bus was inspired by a real bus. Absolutely. It was very organic to my life. And um, I, uh, during the pandemic, so it was four years ago, right at the very beginning, when everybody was trying to figure out what in the world is going on, Uh, My wife and I, I work at home, so my professional life didn't change much, but my wife and I adopted a crazy old hound dog um, from a rescue, and um, he he became my studio mate. He's two feet from me right now. I love him to death, Uh, but he was high energy. So I I took up running, basically. Um, Not a big runner, but I would run at least uh, a mile and then walk back briskly. Well, I live in Southwest Ohio, Ohio, Cincinnati area, and there's a, a scenic, my, little Miami scenic trail that we would run along and through woods. And I happened to notice this school bus through the woods standing in a field, which was curious to me. And as I looked closer, it was surrounded by goats. It was in a goat paddock. It was rusted out, um, sinking in mud. Um, so that was a curious sight. And over the course of that, pretty much that whole year, I would go by it daily with my dog and just started sort of musing over what in the world is that bus doing there? That doesn't seem right. It doesn't belong there. Surely it started it a grand life, bright and shiny, carrying the most precious cargo from one important place to another, home to school and school and back. And that was its purpose. That was its grand entry to its life, but yet it's sitting there sinking in mud surrounded by livestock. But Dan, somehow over time, I would see those goats climbing in and out and all around it. One day it struck me, wait a second, that bus seems happy. So there I had this curious uh, uh, thing, a theme almost. So that's when I went back and said, okay, now, Lauren, as a writer, why do you think that bus seems happy? Let's explore that bus. Well, let's explore what the life of that bus could be. Um, so I felt like I had myself a bit of a story to explore that also that not only features one of the most iconic symbols of, of childhood um, and our society, but also deeper themes about the passage of time and purpose in life and the human feeling we get when we do something for others. Lauren, would you read a small portion of the book for us to give um, viewers a taste of what they'll find here? I'd be happy to, Dan. And it begins this way. There was once a bright yellow bus who spent her days driving. Every morning they climbed in. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter, giggle, giggle, patter. The yellow bus carried them from one important place to another. And they filled her with joy. One day, a new driver came and drove the yellow bus along unfamiliar roads. Every morning, they climbed in. Shuffle clunk, shuffle clunk, creak, creak, clunk. The yellow bus carried them from one important place to another. And they filled her with joy. After a long time, a new driver came and drove the yellow bus into the city. She parked her in a quiet spot but walked away and never returned. Nobody climbed in. The yellow bus didn't drive from one important place to another. No pitter-patters, giggles, shuffles, creaks, or clunks. The yellow bus was empty. 
that might be enough to give a uh, an entrance to the story and maybe a little curiosity with what might come next. I confess I'm one of those people, an adult, who really enjoys a well-crafted picture book. And I'm wondering, because this this book actually touched me for the reasons you just talked about, because it's yeah. it's about, on the surface, this cute little story for kids, because uh, it's a picture book and adults would read this to kids. But as an adult, it is about that passage of time and— even though your circumstances change, still finding purpose in your life and finding contentment in that. To me, that's a powerful message for the adults who are reading this as well. Yeah, I sort of felt like that, Dan. I, I, I went home and I wrote it in this clumsy little journal. And after I wrote it, I thought, this feels a little bit like a little bit bigger. So I appreciate your comments, it, meaning it felt like... Like I, I thought, hmm, this has a little bit of touches of The Giving Tree, you know, by Shel Silverstein, except on some level, maybe even more hopeful, I hope. Um, there's another book that it felt like to me after I wrote it uh, called The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton, which is a real passage of time story that was probably published somewhere in the 50s. Um, but it did feel like a, a picture book that's accessible to children um, because of the yellow bus, uh, protagonist, but also has deeper themes that maybe a child, um, that doesn't understand it as a, as a three-year-old on your lap could grow into and understand it in deeper and different ways throughout their, uh, growing up. And the good thing about it resonating with adults, I would think is that adults are going to be reading the story to the children. And often over and over and over again. So if the adult doesn't like the story, that book's not going to get read as much. Right. And and I do. Yeah, I, that's for sure. Right. Um, I will say exactly. Um, I have heard from young parents of, of 18 month olds who the child just is fascinated by anything that rolls, especially a yellow school bus driving by. So um, with the idea that I used charcoal and black and white, uh, essentially grounds and backgrounds, and then popped the yellow onto that, um, that technique of charcoal and black and white monochromatic backgrounds, um, it allows a little child to experience the book in a different way. They could just point to all the little yellow. So sometimes the bus is really big on a spread and then other times it's it's very small and they have to find it. So, um, but also I agree with you that in the best sense, uh, a piece of children's literature picture book could be enjoyed by both and different audiences on different levels and, uh, people's response to the book, just like any movie could, could vary and be different. What they take from it could be different than somebody else. I'm talking with Lauren Long about The Yellow Bus, and our conversation continues. If you are enjoying this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. And thank you. I wanted to ask you about being both the author and illustrator, because as you know, often with picture books, there's a separate author and an illustrator, and often they never meet or communicate directly. They just go through an editor. But in your case, you're both. So do you feel like that gives you a creative advantage? I do. And, and I have, a, I, I believe, a bit of a unique perspective on that, Dan, because you, you did hit that. A lot of people don't realize when an illustrator illustrates a book that someone else wrote, they often don't know each other. They often have no communication. Um, but throughout my career, that's how I started out. So I, I began my career as an illustrator, illustrating only other manuscripts written by other people. In fact, at that time, it's been about 20 years now. At that time, I never imagined I would write anything. Um, so somewhere along the way, I had an editor ask me, what are your ideas? Do you have any ideas? And I happened to. I, uh, so I, I've illustrated a lot of other books, um, some fairly notable books, um, 
probably most notable is President Barack Obama published a book called Of The I Sing in 2010, and I was the illustrator for that book. Um, Amanda Gorman, more recently, the uh, inaugural poet for the Biden inauguration, um, I illustrated her book called Change Sinks. But I've also illustrated uh, Love by Matt De La Pena and many, many others. Um, but yeah, so to get to your question, I think the advantage is, okay, and I, my first writing and illustrating was Otis the Tractor, which many, many listeners might have heard of. Um, we had six stories and Otis is a tractor. And uh, I wrote that and illustrated. It was somewhat based on um, the experience I had in college in Lexington, Kentucky, working on horse farms. And we, we got to drive an old Ford tractor around pulling lawnmowers and weed eaters. And, um, and I was able to just sort of take that experience and write a picture book where Otis befriends a little calf. But the, the advantage, especially in, in particular in the yellow bus, is I was trying to be very minimal, laconic with my text, with my words. I wanted this story to almost tell itself uh, in wordless panels, um, not completely, certainly a wordless picture book, which I really admire, but one that needs few words. Like I never say children. Uh, I never say elderly uh mature adults. I never say goats. I never say those words because I know as a writer, I know that my reader will see that. Um, I did use those descriptive sound words like pitter patter, pitter patter, giggle, giggle patter, which also become part of the uh, movie experience of this book. So little, little eyes will be reading this while somebody who loves them in the best situation is reading it. So it does become a performance in a way. So I do think long way of answering your question, Dan, that it's innate that when an illustrator writes his own material, there's all this knowledge that you might not even think about that does serve the final product in the end. Now, you mentioned how you illustrated this with the the charcoal and and then the pops of color, but you share in the back of the book that you took another step to just visualize all of this before you were able to sketch it out and to draw it for the book. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, thank you. Once once I had a manuscript, so uh, I've organized my my story on some level, and then uh, I've put it in. I've emailed it to an editor, and we have a, a publisher. Uh, Macmillan, in this case, Roaring Brook Press. Um, that was probably about two years later in summer of 2022 that I actually began working on the sketch dummy. So the plot in uh, the, the, um, the setting for the yellow bus um, takes place in a gorge in a valley surrounded by mountains. And there's a little town at the top with the school and that's where the, the, the school bus starts her life. And then there's a little valley going down to another farm or a farm that's lower. And then there's a bridge that goes along mountains to a lower farm, a low valley. And then the river runs right through it and out. That uh, setting was so important to me for this story that I wanted to be able to draw it from above. And I wanted to be able to show little readers uh, young and old readers, um, where uh, how that uh, setting changes over time throughout the book. I figure the story in terms of setting and time takes place over 50 or 60 years. So I wanted to be able to show that. And one way to show that is show big panoramic overhead views. So uh, again, on your first or many readings, you may not pick up on every detail, but if you go back and really pay attention to the beginning, the middle, and the end, and those settings and how they change, I think that'll be a fun thing for people to go back and really dig into. So I had a drawing. You know, I start, I always tell people when you're trying to make a book out of a manuscript, it's kind of impossible. It's, it's crazy. It's hard. It's scary. 
But I always just start with one drawing that kind of gets my enthusiasm. Now, this is the drawing of the little town. And you can see here, there's a yellow bus that goes across a bridge. But this drawing is fine. I made it up out of my head. But I don't know what this these buildings look like overhead because I drew it out of my head. So that was going to be very hard for one. And then where does the bus go? What does the valley look like? What do the mountains look like surrounding it? So I'm working essentially somewhat realistic. So I decided I need to see this. If I'm going to make this accurate, if I'm going to make this setting accurate over the time of this book, I need to get overhead and I need to, to see this. And I just thought, I'll build a 3D diorama. You know, that won't take me more than a week or two. Um, and so I took out just, it just kind of very um, kind of scrap uh, packaging stuff around the house, uh, tape, glue gun, cardboard. Uh, I even used um, some uh, styrofoam from Michael's and uh, some floral foam, which is, I found is really easy to shave and cut and shape. And then I painted it, um, scrapped it together. Then I got some model uh, railroad little houses. Turns out they were larger in scale than what I needed. And I had a little toy bus that my, my sons used to have. And so the thing grew. It took me a couple of months, um, which wasn't great on the deadline. Uh, but it grew instead of just a card table, which is what I started out to a card table and a six foot table. So it kind of swallows up my whole studio. I don't know if, if I could, I can show you, but I'm, I'm not sure if people will view this, but there's the, my studio and you can see that monstrosity in the middle. But what, what it allowed me to do, Dan, for the first time in my career, I, I sculpted essentially a three dimension of my, of my setting. So then I could use it as a central reference, almost like a still life for me to light and lighting was important. So I could light the, th the model and see how the cast shadows um, from the houses, buildings and the bus cast on the ground. And I think if people look at the book, they'll see that um, reflected in the final art. The picture book is The Yellow Bus by Lauren Long. Lauren, thank you for talking with me today. Dan, thank you so much for having me. Um, I was born in Joplin, Missouri, so I have family in Kansas City and uh, in the, the Springfield, Missouri area. And um, so I'm very proud to be uh, on, on your show in particular, Dan. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to purchase The Yellow Bus, I've placed a link for you in the description below. If you've enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, check out my Some Books Considered channel, and you'll find a link to that below as well. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf, and here are two more interviews you might find interesting. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.